Good morning, everybody. I am Bart Winkler. Welcome into the Winkler verse. Grant Bills, Paul Emmett. Go, oh, guys. It's so good to see mm. you. We all just jumped down here. This is our first take. You as well. It's a privilege and a pleasure to see your face, Bart. You know what I think I'm gonna get installed in my house? You know <laughs> those like time. you know those like break rooms? I need one in my home. All right, if you could have one, this is a real question. If you could have one completely out of the ordinary room in your house, something that a normal house would never have, I'll give you an example. I, would I love just gave you one. No, but I'm saying, is that your real answer? Because <laughs> I would do a trampoline room. Mm. Big, wide, tall ceiling trampoline room. Isn't that fun? Carpets, Jerry. Carpets. Doesn't that sound fun, though? I'd want it levels. Everything's Level. got to be levels. That's it. Shit. Maybe like a soundproof room. A lot of padding where I could go in there and just scream. Not, no. <laughs> no, not. I, I suppose I could. That would be better. I, was <laughs> I, I thought you were like, saying like, to let out my rage. No, no. I was thinking more to like listen to music and play music really loud without having oh. to worry about bothering those around me I, I could scream though that's a benefit it's multi-use so it's a panic room slash music room yeah i can't i can't think of a better one than break room because um as we were setting up to record and god only knows if this will even ever post <laughs> um the internet got bad again and i had internet problems this morning where it wasn't showing my wi-fi we got through that and then the Everything was fixed. I got the better router. I got the better package. I got the extender. Mm. Everything should be great, and it has been great. Mm -hmm. And then now today, when I need it, um, it's causing me problems. So on the way upstairs, I kicked a tiny garbage can mm. with my bare foot. Mm. Um, prognosis, fine. My tootsies are okay. My tootsies. But I, th I just... I. I would like a room where I could just go and and break shit because I look around and everything to me is like, you know, how like, like you're super horny. Everything looks like you could. <laughs> like all of a sudden that water bottle looking pretty sexy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but to me, everything looks like I could smash that. I could smash that. And the computer I'm talking to you on now is a new computer because I smashed my other one. Yeah. So I would, yes. I mean, a break room is, if I could just have a room with shit in it that I could just break. Isn't break shit a song by one of your guys' bands? Knock, don't, don't. What are you doing? Stop. Three seconds. We're good. Whoa. I'm All on right, top um, of it. You think I was going to play four seconds? You're crazy. I get three. Who sings it? Fred Durst's band. Sing who the stop? Who is that? I'm testing you. This is a test. <clears throat> yeah. Limp Bizkit. Yes, okay. I was going to say a band out of Jacksonville, Florida. That would have helped me even less. <laughs> Leroy Butler and the but the, the Leroy and the Butlers. Yeah, yeah, I really, yeah, yeah. I really want to hear long form if you don't. Leroy mind. Butler and the Leapers. We've hit on our key topic, which is what type of room would you have in your house? And if Bart's day keeps going this way, he just might break your fucking face tonight. Um, but that aside, now that we've hit on that, Grant, I want to hear long form. You talk about Woodstock 99 and the artists who were there. I watched one corn video. The crowd looked electric. The music was absolute shit. <laughs> and also, there are people who got mangled in that crowd. I you mean, can't tell not, me that everyone just walked away from that show like that was great. Like there were people who, who died. Were affected the rest of their lives. Uh, I mean, there were people who died. Mm. Oh, really? <clears throat> I don't think during the corn show, but. During Metallica, I saw during, um, I mean, I think like passing out and then being amidst, you know, what was it? 100,000 plus people? Getting Travis Scotted at Woodstock also, 99 Grant, before like, it I, was cool. I appreciate that the music, you were like five when Woodstock 99 happened. So it's probably one of those like time and place things. But if you can't just bang your head to corn rocking out blind, there's something broken inside of you. I will bang my head to system of a down. That's you'll get me there. That's about as far as you can get me. I love that. I love that you do like and enjoy 
system of a down. We have actually sing. Well, they, like, well the, the thing with system is they sing. They scream a little, but they sing. A lot of the other bands, they more just they more just yell. So we start singing. He's like, "My cock is much bigger than yours." Well, okay, My well that's can walk right through the door. That's a cherry picked example. <laughs> that's a very cherry picked example. Did we lose Bart again? I think we might have. Oh boy. <clears throat> That is a cherry picked example, though. It is. They, I love System of a Down. Although, what what song you know is that? Cigarro. The song "Violent Pornography" is on the same album. So those two, I'll give you those two. The those kind the of one, shit that's on your TV. Radio video. Oh god, that's such a good great album. album. Everybody, everybody, everybody living now. Everybody. They kind of suck live from videos I've seen. It's like eh, I don't know. I saw them in two thousand. I think just one time. Ozfest. Uh, I mean, they were always wild, like interesting. Mm, always wild. Well, we like, got it, wasn't like, it wasn't the Mahat part. It wasn't like the most like crisp. Everything is exactly how it's supposed to sound on the album. Like that's not what they ever were. Well, that's not real music, man. Mm -mm. Grant, how do you feel this happening to me? I don't know. We're having fun without you, though. Yeah, that's how it's going to have to be today. <clears throat> uh, not that I'm even important to this. You want to try your phone? That one no. time I can get connected, we are right with the phone. Um, I'll maybe do a hot spot if it fucks me over again. You had a gripe about something, Bart? Besides no, I just wanted to. I had a few uh, things before we get started. Yeah. Hit it. I just want to thank everybody mm. for the pat of boys and that of that of boys and pats on the back. Pat of boys. Game balls. Yeah, game balls for me. And deflated balls. For losing a few pounds. Mm. People were mm -hmm. kind to say things. Uh, what did I say? I lost 30. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to make that 25. <laughs> um, bad weekend. <clears throat> it's like when you lose a little weight and then you gain on like three pounds. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, if like I got down to two from 230, but then suddenly 205 feels like 250. The problem is that it takes like a while for your body to be like, oh, 200 is the new norm. <clears throat> Going back up to 205 happens really easily because it's not set in yet. Um, I also did, wanted did, did, to... Wait, did people comment because of my comment or because they just saw the video and they're like, oh, like, yeah, look at that. People have been commenting for months, Paul. I just <laughs> oh, good. brought it up. Um, oh, nice. That's awesome. Um, the license plate thing, big hit outside of you two fucks. Fuck off. Where, That's you invented where did, that. where did you else try this publicly? People have been DMing me. People have been tweeting me. Cap. I don't believe that. People have been coming up to me at the quick trip. <laughs> that I talked to me about it. That I believe. And then also I wanted to uh, encourage people while I sort of am being chased from this place. Grant is embracing the space of streaming on Twitter and bringing his show to YouTube. Um, and I, I see, I'm scrolling, I see little Grant there. And uh, I, I hope that people go and subscribe to Grant's YouTube channel. Thank you for the retweet, by the way. I'm only asking one more time because every time I tweet it out, I get a, I, it works. Being annoying works, I guess. What are you at for subscribers? I am at 93, 93. which doesn't seem like a lot, but I made it like three days ago. So, so wait, what happens if you subscribe to someone's Twitter now? What is their X? No, is this is YouTube. We're trying to get him to YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. Follow. Okay. Yeah, we got to subscribe to his <laughs> YouTube to get him up to the magic number. Mm -hmm. When 1, do they send me a plaque? Is that is that 100? Is that 100? what I think is a million? <laughs> no, no, you get 100,000. 100,000 gets you a plaque? Mm-hmm. You know what? I've actually noticed that I've been losing subscribers. So do people people don't actively manage their YouTube subscriptions. That's not like Twitter. I get it's like, oh, I'm gonna well, some, some people get an email when I put out a new video. They turn a lot of people turn that off. An email? Like, yeah, like, like you can turn on like, notifications to say yeah. like, well, OK, no, no, no. A notification is one thing. Y you don't mean you're not saying email for push notification. You're not that old, are you, Bart? You mean I, I email to their Google. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gmail. You, you get an email. You okay. can. You can choose. Yeah. Some is push notification. <clears throat> Some is just you see the little thing at the top. But but the content I've been putting out this summer, 
people have been actively unsubscribing to. What would have been different this summer than anything you ever would have? Like, it's not like you changed the format of your content. What was this content different that people were like, I'm out of here? Well, we took a month off, guys. Oh, so you weren't active enough. Yeah, we took a we took a month off. All right. Um, do you notice a pep in your step, Grant? Is it is this a new mm -hmm. era of the Wisco Sports Show? It's just a fun project. It's you know you need fun new things to work on, and so yeah, I'm I mean I'm doing it all, so like trying to whip up some graphics and stuff. So that's been kind of fun. <clears throat> you, when you when you someday have a, a producer on your show, it is going to hit you like crack. You're not even going to know what to do. You've just been one man banding shit your whole career. And it's fun. I, I know, get to, but I get to put my little touch on everything. I know, but like, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about tonight. And so, does Carlos gonna, make a rundown for you? No, I still make my rundown. Okay. Which he has special access to on my Google Docs. Mm. Mm. But and he's, 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 he's the one busting his ass for guests. I, I just like that. <laughs> Woo. I fully, um, I shared a Google Doc because sometimes I, I fill in for other shows and then there is a producer uh, and I'll share a Google Doc and then I feel self-conscious because they read my, you know, everyone has a way of writing and it's like, oh, this is kind of my own. You're in my head when you read my rundown. It's like, what? The, someone would look at it like, what? Because when you speak it out loud into a radio show, it sounds like a radio show. But when you read it on paper, you're like, this guy's fucking weird. And I guess I am, but I wouldn't like that if I were you. All right, well, while the internet's working, we should ask some uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm's. All right. As the NFL goes from four preseason games to three preseason games, as teams start to pivot to more of these, like these, what do they call them, intra-squad scrimmages, and they host a thing, preseason is unnecessary. And if it's gone in five to ten years entirely, so be it. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. Can I bat lead off on this one, Winkler? Thank you. Mm -mm. I, I think the preseason is important. It gets us excited for football. It gets us warmed up. I like the aesthetic of it. I like having a football game on my TV on a Saturday night in the summer. And you know, when the announcer's wearing polos. It's football, <laughs> but it but it's like, but it's still summer. Like, we're in a good mood. Like, I don't have the weight of the upcoming work week. The days aren't getting shorter, you know, all that stuff. So I like that as a consumer. It gives us content, but also... Colin Cowherd says on his on his show all the time, half the league is undrafted. Like part of what makes the NFL special compared to the NBA or Major League Baseball is you have Sam Shields and Tremont Williams and Carrington Valentine and Donald Driver. Like not just guys like AJ Green on the Bucks. It's like oh, that's a nice little he chips in, but like some all time great players have come out of nowhere, and the preseason is a part of those guys earning their way onto rosters and, and catching the eyes of GMs and and, and earning a job. And I think that's cool. And I think it would be a shame if the NFL lost it. I don't think we'd all turn our back on the NFL. It's football. We're never going to stop. But I do think that's that's a fun part of the league that kind of sets it apart from other American sports. So I will say. Mm -mm. So I'll, um, before Bart goes, it's because we'll give Bart the tiebreaker. I think he's going to go with you on this, Grant. I have my YouTube TV DVR set to like just record any NFL football. Right. Record it. And then I can watch what I want to watch, how I want to watch it. And it's not time sensitive. And I'm just going to turn on. And I realized dress rehearsals you know these these war it's 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 so not the same thing that i'm going to watch in three weeks that i watched like four snaps of a non-packers preseason game and i said i watched like all of cowboys rams on sunday i'm a sickle so that's totally degenerate behavior which is fine um so my answer is mm-hmm I, I don't really think with the, you know, you hear this all the time, vanilla defenses and, you know, guys are barely playing. It's not the same product. It's not the same really sport. I, um, it's fine if people like it. I just, and I, you know, it's like, Hey, let's take, take the, you know, let's take the young kids to the game. It's not a high pressure football game. Like there's Love that part of it. Love that part of it. He can speak to that as a father. Both of you can, I mm -hmm. can't. So I speak to that perspective. Somebody please. Yes. As a TV, not consumer, going to this one though. Are you going next week? No, no. As a, as a TV consumer for the product of like, I'm going to watch Cowboys Rams. I found my answer at least at this moment, at this, this year, this, at this moment, this time to be, mm -hmm, I don't, you know, if preseason's gone, so be it. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Um, no, thank you to preseason football. 
I'm going to be a degenerate come that Thursday night. And then for the next 22 weeks that follow, but yeah, I just, it's, if it's important to the team's process to find who the player, of course, like that's all good. Consuming it. I'm, I don't, not into it. So mm-hmm, to my question, which Bart type get rid of preseason. I'm going to say, yeah, get, I mean, I, as far as like, if it's gone, because clearly it's going to go from four, it's to three, it's going to go to two. I wouldn't be surprised if it went to zero. So I'm saying if that were ever to happen, so be it good riddance mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. I'm saying, mm-hmm, so be it good riddance. If that happens. Yeah. I think I'm going to go. Mm-hmm, good riddance. Oh, I'm surprised. I am too, but they've all, they've already sort of done that for us. Totally. So the, nobody plays like, Bryce Young's not playing. Oh, we're not going to – Bryce Young. I know. He should play. Yeah. And then you have J.J. McCarthy play, and then he gets hurt. hmm So now it's like, well, maybe he shouldn't play. It's like, why are we – why is why are there these three games that exist solely for guys to hopefully not get hurt in? Yeah, right. And I mean, maybe, just, this, maybe this is – you know, this is what I'll do tonight. Should we get rid of the preseason? Got it. God damn it. <laughs> that was uh marvin home alone oh that was actually a very good know. marvin home alone well that's what i want to be for halloween making my kid kevin oh. but then my wife doesn't want to be joe pesci to complete I why the, to complete the trio <sighs> i get my brother um they're already yeah like they're already doing it and what i was saying last night on the infinity sports network mm. <clears throat> is this time of the year is kind of dumb. Like we're all getting excited. We're doing our fantasy drafts. We're trying to figure out that we're like, you know, planning and getting ready and being like, all right, there's just a couple more weekends. So let's enjoy the summer before we, we, we like absorb into our couch. But what are the storylines in the NFL? What are the top storylines in the NFL throughout August? Nothing good. Injury, hold out, injury, hold out. Jordan Addison carted off at practice today, by the way, just oh. 10 minutes ago or so, if you guys didn't see that. I did not. Seems like Bart might have froze. Bart is frozen again. BS about that while Bart returns because he was on I, I, I want to believe that he's not frozen and he's just in stunned disbelief. But what a day for Vikings fans, right? Oh, like, terrible. you learned the J.J. McCarthy. And by the way, a lot of people are downplaying that injury. They're like, well, he probably wasn't going to play much this year anyways. You saying McCarthy? Yeah, I don't buy that. I don't, sure I don't buy that. I'm sure the Vikings were like, hey, Darnold, you get the first four games. Tops, I think. Yeah, at most. With how good McCarthy looked in the preseason. So, yeah, that's, I mean, you're not wrong, Bart. Like, it's a lot of injuries and holdouts, but. What are you guys doing with my internet this way? Are you pretending I'm still there? Yeah, well, I mean, we kind of comment on it and then keep chatting. We're professional broadcasters. I wonder what it will look like on the going. video. Will I just be, like, floating or? As, as Grant shared the Addison thing, it looked like you were, like, stunned into silence. It was actually pretty seamless until you rejoined, and then you could have jumped right back in, and it's like nothing. I even well, set it back up for you. I returned the conversation did, to the point where you, you left it off. You did. That's really good. But I think curiosity right kills the cat once again. That's I think. Is, I think no matter what happens here from this conversation going forward, I thought I was potentially teeing up your angle tonight, and I accomplished it. And uh, you're welcome. But well, like I said, though injury hold on. That's all the stories. That's it. Yep. And then, sure, oh, that Jordan Love play was cool. And, you know, it's nice when there's, like, guys that emerge, and so you don't want to take that away from these guys. From a consumer standpoint, I sort of like that there, there is a Packer experience I can have as, like, a random Tuesday in oh. June type Brewer game. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, hey, the Packers are on, you know, we can watch it. Maybe Sunday night I'll meet somebody out at, you know, the, the Broad House. Maybe we'll watch it. Maybe um, maybe I'll just, you know, whatever. The game can be on in the background of a grad party. Fine. It's all fine. But is that necessary? I mean, do I, do I need that? Do Something I, worth I, mentioning, I, I think it depends on the team. I think there are some teams that can really, really benefit from the postseason. Like last year's Packers team. And even this year a little bit, like a lot of young guys, rookies, upstart, need the reps. 
but then the last couple of years with Rodgers, the preseason felt like a lot more of like, let's just slog through this shit. Right? What, we, right. what we should get to is we should get the NFL in lockstep with the spring football, move the spring football into the summer, let teams give like, okay, here's 30 guys. Like, you know how they used to do it in the G League where like one team represented four different teams? Oh, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. So they here here I don't know something where guys can still get the opportunity to earn a spot in August, but it's not just a whole like facade of like even uh, it was Bryce Young. I brought him up. Yep. I was watching that game last Thursday, or at least the start of it. <clears throat> they put him in pads and they did the whole pregame workout. Yeah, and then and then like why even dress? Yeah, I don't know. Dumb. I think young players should play. I think they should play. <clears throat> Regardless, so if, if like, nobody's going to play any young players, okay, well then maybe I'll change my tune a little bit, but <clears throat> I think it'll depend on your team and where they are in their trajectory of building it up or tearing it down where preseason could mean more or less. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of fun. The variance team to team. Mm-hmm. Great question. Um, I think uh, question. as we continue, I'm going to need to, uh, next time the internet goes out, I'm going to, um, wait, I screwed this up last time. I'm going to pop a gummy is what I'm going to need to do. And I'll be right uh, back. You, you yeah, my, yeah. I, you're good. Okay. See you, Paul. <laughs> yeah, happyplacehemp.com. Happy Place Hemp. The promo code is BART. 25% each. 25% off each and every order. Um, certainly would be nice to calm these uh, nerves and anger and frustration right now via one of their fine products, which you can check out happyplacehemp.com and browse. A lot of great different uses for the CBD stuff, uh, the THC stuff that they have. You can get the infused seltzers, which are becoming very popular. Um, the the kind of drink itself, you're seeing these pop up all over the place. Great to have some on hand in the fridge. They make those for you, and they're working on new flavors and different um, levels. They're also, they've got their traditional gummies, which are great for sleep, great for focusing. You can take different ones to relax over the evening. So check them all out. And then some of the other products, dog treats. They have dog treats to help your dog. They've got uh, oil if you just want to do like the CBD stuff. I've used it on parts of my body. The way I phrase that makes it seem like I'm talking about privates, but I just mean like wrist and like inner thigh. And it has worked or at least helped the problem that I had inner go thigh. away. Um, <laughs> well, I when I had gout or when I thought I had gout. Well, it was gout. I love how our voices are just popping in as you're full screened on the stream yeah i should have muted you paul just flat out told me he's leaving like we are off air uh happyplacehemp.com promo code is bart (sighs) very frustrated over your internet no over my uh over my brewer's owner stealing buckets of sand from a beach i think it's awesome did i tell you i emailed the guy who wrote the the original story at the LA times. Is he coming on? No, he never got back to me. Well, I emailed him this morning. I, I just, I doubt it at this point, but he's only got like 1500 Twitter followers. Like he's not, he should, he should be receptive is my point. And I so don't the story that. is that they have like a residential place that they're building and he just stole sand from the beach. I think he's like rebuilding his ocean front that has decayed with sand from elsewhere. And then also I read that like, he's just left. He hasn't, he's not the one driving the backhoe, but the per the people he has working there have just like left the excavator on the beach. So then the tide comes in and there's just this excavator in the water, which is if I owned a beach from property, I'd be like, that looks awful. Get it out of here. Right. But also like that's polluting, like there's oil going in the water and stuff. So I, I think it's just, it's just kind of a mess. But from what I read, neither homeowner is named in the lawsuit they're suing each other's llcs mm. which must be a rich person thing to do it's like well i don't want my name on it so i'm gonna you know maybe for tax purposes too i don't know it's oh, great man. content though it's incredible content well i saw your tweet it adds to all the things that we can just shit on the brewers for dude it's the list is just massive it's so, ju- it, it just grows continuously and he, and he's not he is not the first person ever to steal sand from somewhere like he's not the first person ever to 
hey, I need more sand. I'm going to add some sand. Like, he's not the first person to do that. I promise you. But he's the first person to take this much with actual heavy machinery. Yeah. And then leave it there. Yeah. Like, you're I don't either, think he's trying to be super, subtle You're either it. one of the world's dumbest people if you do that, or one of the world's, like, I don't give a fuck people. Like, a quick comp before you get back to Paul, because, Paul, you're on a heater. My parents live next to a cabin. There's not people there all the time. Their wood pile is massive. There's so much firewood over there, right? So every once in a while, it's like, we want to have a bonfire tonight. Grant, go grab five logs. It would be like if my parents had a four-wheeler and a trailer and used it to take huge loads of their wood. And then when they weren't using it, they just left it there in their front yard. You know, like could not make it more obvious what they were doing. That's that's what I thought of. It's hilarious. And I appreciate Mark for it because it's great content. Is is there a, and I, I mean, I was going to potentially facetiously bring this topic up. So coming back and hearing it being talked about is a fun surprise. He had to just have like thought this is fine. Right. Well, I don't know. When you have a certain level of money, and again, he's not a billionaire, just a very rich millionaire. Would you like to correct all the headlines that have said otherwise? Um, you do, like your brain. I think your brain changes when when you have so much money that you don't understand. Like, oh, wow, the, this gallon of milk that's normally five forty nine, it's on sale for four forty nine. That's a deal. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> but I also remember when it was $1.99. Like some people are just like, it's a banana. How much can it cost? $20? It's a banana, Michael. If I could Go see a Star War. <laughs> that was the example that I was going to use as well. I'm glad we're all over that. So I think that that's sometimes that you're just brain functions. You think that the world is your playground. Ebo, our morning show host, also po posited the idea Good that, word. thank you, that the neighbor who's suing Mark might be like two or three or four X richer than Mark. Like this house, this house that Mark bought is only, he bought it for like 23 million bucks, which I know is a lot, but in the world of California coastline beach homes, that's not that much. And I wonder if like there is a billionaire or a multi-billionaire neighbor of Mark who's like this fucking broke man <laughs> next to me, leaving his construction equipment in the yard. Like, I wonder if that's at play too. Where it's like levels of richness and how that's in, coming into play. I wonder. Either way, it's an objectively funny story, I think. It's, like, a, it's I, fucking incredible. I, I, initially, yeah. I initially read this story without the knowledge of who was going to be revealed as said person. And when it was then, like, it was like, like there was a headline, you know, billionaire with sand, blah, blah. And I read it. Like, oh, this is interesting. You're Which, telling me you found, you were reading about rich person construction dynamics on the West coast. And you just happened to stumble into the story that contained the brewer's owner. Is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you the AP article initially, which I clicked on and read did not have any mention of Atanasio in the headline. I just thought it was a wild. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to read this odd story. I <laughs> great. As Bart. That's on a, band, is on a heater. <clears throat> Do you see his other one just now? Sandrew McCutcheon. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but he's Sandrew McCutcheon. <laughs> Does he get paid for these? Like, is he like check mark? No, he's not. No, and he's only got like a thousand followers. <laughs> he's just doing this for the culture. Guys, Craig has lost our sand. <laughs> Craig has lost our beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I did just, I read an AP article that way that I found interesting. And then, oh my goodness, it's <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. the The neighbor has a uh, a net worth of one hundred and two point seven seven billion. Oh my gosh! So imagine you're that guy, and Mark Atanasio <clears throat> lives next to you and is leaving his shit everywhere in the yard. Yeah. Which to them, that's like leaving a lawnmower in the. You know what I mean? Like so you're just like, you're annoyed by the neighbor, and you're like, you know what would really generate interesting press for my asshole neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> by the way you mentioned arrested development so i'm gonna do a hard pivot and just say you know the guy who played gene parmesan recently passed right martin mall yeah. martin mall thank you the the uh the eagle from veep as well yes yes does a bear piss in the shower don't forget uh, roseanne don't forget his role on roseanne 
But does does anybody else want to just believe that Jessica Walter, you know, Lucille Bluth, all of a sudden in the afterlife, Jean, you know, like wouldn't that just and that just like a fun like like. You know, I'm not fun, but like I don't know, just my, it my is, mind. It is fun to imagine that we go somewhere when we die. Yeah, yeah, but but wow. then that that they're connecting. Fun. They're they're connect. I I just want to believe that they connected and that they did the bit. You know, like that they did the gene, and then the bear shaking its head, <laughs> only for it to be gene parmesan. <laughs> I just he was he was far from the best. <laughs> the narrator there is so great. Okay. I don't uh, think that that would happen. What's that? Have, have, uh, do I do I want to spoil Lost for anybody? Uh, you can say spoiler. I mean, I've, I've seen Lost. You're good for me. If I don't know about Grant, I don't think so. <clears throat> not to talk about the afterlife, right? But I don't think like if we die and go to heaven, time works. Like I don't think you have to like be up there and look down on Earth and be like. Man, can my husband die yet so he can come up here and be with me? I think once you're in heaven, time is they're there. Everyone's there. They're already there. Oh, even if they're also we're already alive. there. Time I'm is already there by Lone Star. Is that where you're getting this from? They're already there. Yeah. Take a look around. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying that we are both we're here on earth, but also I'm present with my grandfather's in heaven right now there's two means it's like the void in loki it's beyond space and time i i knew as soon as you said what you were saying and this is not an ideal thing for my brain to do right away but my brain right away went to like oh you just watched too much loki yeah <laughs> but don't you think that may don't you think that as, um, as, as hard as that is to wrap around your head don't you think that that maybe it's more plausible it's that way instead of like you wake up in heaven and it's Wednesday, August 14th. It's a random Tuesday in August. <laughs> yeah. It's a, ran it's a <laughs> random Tuesday in heaven. So I have another topic for you. Yes, okay. Paul. This would have been more exciting to talk about right after the Bucks signed Gary Trent Jr. But let's see if Paul, we can... nothing was exciting to talk about right after the Bucks signed Gary Trent oh, Jr. Oh, then then A, fuck you, because I disagree. B, I mean, I'm excited that they got him. It's no, no, better but, they got him than they didn't. All right. Well, I'll talk to Grant on this one then. If he has, unless he shares your your vibe. Well, no. All I would say is, as someone who didn't want to trade Brook Lopez, who was like, oh, I don't know about Middleton, and like, there's all the contractual things and everything. What I thought signing Gary Trent Jr. did is it like completed the off season, where you like, okay, you had this massive, I thought, massive hole at starting shooting guard, where you're like, oh, like they can start. Would they do AJ Green or would they? You know, like how would they figure out the minutes then if they put this guy here? And um, I don't know. It, maybe it's hard to think about this five weeks five weeks removed from it happening, and it, it's still two months until basketball season. But I thought it was an unlikely thing to happen. That when it happened, it was like, oh, like the roster like makes sense now. So all I wanted to ask essentially was after adding Gary Trent Jr. You can go into this Bucks season. Wait, Jordan Addison's hurt? Did, is it that's when your that's when your video cut out Bart? Yeah, you got carted off. Fuck me, dude. I know you have ten leagues, but he's got to be on at least one of them, I assume. <sighs> sorry, I did a classic Bart there. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Are you saying that the off season feels complete now, Paul? Is that what yes, you're wondering? The Bucks off season was made complete. As a result, and the and the, you feel really good about the roster now. They didn't they didn't do the major shakeups that some people, including myself, thought. Well, I think you're going to have to do a major shakeup in order to in major. I mean, like Brooke or Chris. I don't mean Dame or Giannis, but in order to like make the roster whole and have it have more uh, like good depth, I thought you maybe had to do that unless you got lucky. Gary Trent Jr. was offered a major contract by the Raptors like a year ago. I mean, he Dennis Schroeder'd himself where he's like, no, I want more than that. And then he couldn't get anything more than the minimum in free agency. So like, I don't want anyone to talk about the Gary Trent Jr. thing is, oh, well, it's it's a minimum player. What, you know, what you, your expectations can't be, whatever. Like, no, like his market value is that of a $20 million player who, at least with Toronto. Anyway, 
maybe it's the wrong time for this. Maybe we can revisit it when they're at least playing, you know, October basketball. But well, the NBA thought, Cup schedule just came out. I mean, there's plenty to get excited about. I don't know. I I needed a hard break after the end of the playoffs, and I'm like ready. I'm back. Could have fooled me with how much we talked about him, but glad that we're back and talking about him again. Any thoughts on the Bucks? This is this is the rush. Like they're not going to have. There's not going to be a Damian Lillard trade this year where in September they trade Brook and Chris for Hill in the name. Like th- this is the roster. You feel good about it? Mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. I, I'll say mm-hmm because of Gary Trent Jr. But can I add another reason why I feel better about it than I did Please. at the beginning of the offseason? I, yeah. I think what's his name? AJ Johnson. Yeah, yeah. He looked good in summer league. Mm-hmm. Like he looked exciting, and I think Bucks fans kind of needed that because those draft picks didn't really make a whole lot of sense on their face. Yeah. But the fact that he looked good, I think gave us something to be excited about that. That honestly made a big difference for me too. And Gary Trent, you're right. was kind of the player that put the bow on it. And yeah. Like, okay. Now we have now DeLon Wright doesn't have to be. The starting shooting guard. Yeah, exactly. We can expect less of, of guys who I don't really want to expect all that much from. Yeah. It's Could I say yeah. something that um, I need to say? Yeah. Say what you need to say. <laughs> My brother-in-law and I do that all the time. It's a good song. Say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. Um, this is not something that I would like. If I were to ever be with and finally sit down and talk to a person about stuff, this would be like a gateway conversation. What is this? What are we doing now? Uh, uh, ther- therapy. Oh, you mean th- okay, okay, okay. Psychiatry. Now, now I follow. Yep, yep, yep. Gotcha. This would be a gateway to open up the sort of dance we do when I reveal some things and they help, and to kind of gauge what the relationship will be. Mm. So it's not serious in any way, but it can play that way if I want it to. There is. I, I, I'm not. I'm not any. I am not. I am not any less of a fan, but I feel like having the show I have now, it is sucking energy from Bart getting super pumped up about Gary Trent Jr. Hmm. From, I don't even know, like, who's, I I haven't watched any of this Brewers Dodgers series at all. I haven't watched a minute. That's okay. Um, the Packer game. I saw Jordan Love's touchdown, and then I DVR'd it because I got to go back and I got to just sitting on my DVR three minutes into the game. It's just it's taken a lot of that energy from me, um, and I feel I feel bad. I feel I feel bad as I jump on here to do these. I don't I I haven't watched I mean I'm, I haven't watched Brewer game in a week, and this is the like the best year they're having this entire time. Mm-hmm. I think it's odd to continue to kind of keep the Bucks a part of this, Paul. I think it's odd that Giannis and Dame are on one of our teams and they feel oh, so right I, now. I, what did I, do? Did I tell the license plate story again? Jesus Christ. No, I'm adding to what you're saying. Yeah. I can't speak to that, mm-hmm. but I can add to it by saying Giannis and Dame and the Bucks specifically feel like such a distant third in our state yeah. right now behind the Packers and the Brewers. Mm-hmm. You know? That I think is odd. It's not that I'm not excited about him. It just they feel so far away. I mean, doesn't anyone stay in one place anymore? All right. No. Song song lyrics. You guys think doesn't that. anybody stay in one place? Who is that? Carol King. They just I don't know. They feel so far away. But I tell you what, Paul. When the season comes back, I will be excited to watch AJ Johnson, and I'll feel so much better that I don't have to for an entire preseason, and then for the first part of the season, I feel so much happier that I don't have to gear myself up to be like delon wright is gonna have the year the bucks need Mm -hmm. and and some of the who's the other guy they brought in torian prince torian prince i am not a big i'm not a huge torian prince fan but i then i don't have to be no those guys now the only thing that's unfortunate well i mean maybe it's a good thing but you might be excited about aj johnson in august and maybe even in october but i mean his over under meaningful minutes this season is three (laughs) yeah you know he's not the Bucks are too good to play, and let, but I mean he's been the I'm, I'm second guessing myself, but AJ Johnson's been the one who's been working out with Paul George, right? And like, have you I seen those? So. I believe you're yeah. correct. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Bart, as you might expect, if you're just listening to the audio, is frozen and froze mid yell or whatever that was about to be. Mouth agape. Yeah, <laughs> I do think Gary Trent, I, I hadn't considered it that way, but I think he did kind of round out the offseason in a way where all the other pieces kind of fall into place. It reminds because those draft picks don't have to be great contributors, and the other guys don't have to be great contributors. Mm-hmm. One, it reminds me of, and you know, I'm not going to talk about my fantasy teams because no one cares. But I do think it's like I think of when you're doing a dynasty league like Barton. I have a couple that are together. You have, like, you go into the next season. You're like, yeah, but I, if only I had that one extra depth running back, then I wouldn't have to start that. You know, like it. It's like it's good. I like my roster. It's really, but it's not complete. I'd love mm-hmm. if I could just slightly move this piece for that piece. I would feel so much better about the completion of my roster. And if they had gone into the, if the bucks had gone into this season with what they had pre Gary Trent jr. Signing, if he had chosen to sign somewhere else, I would have felt okay. Right. Like, Oh man, if only, and it's silly, right? Cause is Gary Trent jr. Going to be their fifth best player? Maybe, yeah, but like, it's not like they, Oh my goodness. It's not like going to have the same, earth moving impact of they just signed Damian Lillard. Are they just traded for Damian Lillard? But yet it's like it's this okay, the puzzle doesn't have the missing corner piece. It's you know, like I know Grant, like if you do puzzles as an adult, I did not corners, until, corners but, and edges. Yeah, it's but like seriously. So I felt like that was the last thing where I'm like, oh I just found that missing puzzle piece under the couch. I can finish the thing. But who's that player for the Packers? Do the Packers have a guy in, in the draft or in free agency where you can circle and say Without that guy, I'd feel a little incomplete. Good question. Xavier McKinney? Yes, actually. That's a yes. I was, about to say, I was about to say Jordan Morgan. Like, just having, like, that, sure. you know, like, the the offensive line, are they that much better in 2024 without him? No, I mean, probably not. But, like, it just rounds out. Where, okay, then that number, the guy who was going to start there gets pushed to the bench. And then the first guy off the bench gets pushed to the seventh most offense, uh, most seventh <laughs> offensive line spot, right? So it's yeah. that that whole effect of everyone moves back but in terms of like top end talent yeah like if the Packers had this really good defense and didn't have Xavier McKinney you'd probably be like I mean like god you you just heard about Bullard and Williams but now they have a guy to kind of lead them into battle and help them start their careers and yeah you don't have to go into that thinking like you know like almost like Bart last year was all about you know Anders Carlson is going to cost this team the season right And it's like, oh, yeah, probably like you would just say, like, oh, I know the safety position is going to cost them when it matters the most. Yeah. Like, that's how I would have felt with the Bucs. Like, you know, starting DeLon Wright all season long at the shooting guard position, you don't win a championship with that as you're starting to. Now, if only DeLon Wright could be your backup one slash two, you've completed your puzzle. So that's great follow up question with the Packers. Well, that's why I'm here. You could ask it to Bart. Uh, too, if you'd like, but I mean, it's uh, so Bart, who would be the, I'll, I'll take it. I, I suggested it to you, but Grant had a good follow-up is who was like your puzzle piece guy for the Packers. If there was one this off season, was there a draft pick or a signing a la Gary Trent with the bucks that completed your vision? Of oh, Xavier the McKinney. Okay. Yeah. That's, that, that was the first, that was the, the suggestion that Grant made spontaneously. And I was like, Oh yeah, I think that's the right one. Um, for sure. You could say Josh Jacobs, but Josh Jacobs entering was almost contingent on Aaron Jones exiting. So right. Like, like, like if would, Josh Jacobs wasn't available for the Packers, I, I want to know what their other plan was or how, how else they would have handled this. You know, what is our backup's name? Is it Tanner Pratt? Cooper? Michael Pratt. Michael. Michael. I keep thinking it's, I keep thinking it's Mitchell Pratt from, I, I said Cooper Pratt the other day on a radio hit that I did on our rock. I just, I just, I just, cause that's a, that's a Brewers player. Yes. That's okay, why. So I'm com- I'm combining the two just like you did. Okay. I was like, wait, which one's which? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to lose. I got it. We got to wrap this up. I'm going right. to lose it again. This was, this was good. This was good. I think this is the longest, far, but I thought it was fine. This is one of the longer stretches of my life I've gone without crying. And I think I'm going to break that today. Interesting. I'm very upset. I'm very upset. I just don't get you. Like I have friends. I grew up in rural Wisconsin. You know, they don't have fiber optic. It's it's a struggle for them. I have I don't I don't but you live in town, in the middle of town. If you lived any closer to Milwaukee, you'd be downtown. Thank you. I said if you were any closer. I I didn't say you couldn't be closer. I said if you were closer. I live in Milwaukee. Yeah. I don't know the I, I don't know the I city. Took a, I took a half mile walk today. I was in Milwaukee, a good portion of it. <laughs> okay. 
good. No, I, I, I have everything I need to have. I, I mean, it wor- and, it, and it worked. It worked is what pisses me off. And the problem just comes back. Well, thank you guys for your endurance. We, we powered through. We had, like for being you. Audio listeners had no idea you dropped this most recent time. But like if I'm talking to I'm talking to Ian O'Connor this week, as is America, but if I'm talking to him and it drops, what is he just gonna pick it up and be like, well, Bart's got, you know, but I'll take it from here. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would That'd, be wait, are you talking to him from home? Yeah. Oh no. I'm doing a double stack. I'm doing a podcast play for the show. I haven't done one of those in a while. Oh, a double dip. Yeah. I feel like that makes sense. Why wouldn't you do it that way? But I think I'm going to change my background and make a Bart Winkler show one. I think you should do it with this pegboard wall with Happy Place Hemp in the corner. <laughs> I will be sitting with the pegboard. But I mean, will that be? Will that be what he sees? Or no, he'll, he'll see this. Okay. Are All you going right. to wear your best Wisconsin trucker hat and gray T-shirt? No, maybe I'll maybe I'll do my hair and go hatless. There you go. Jesus. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Sorry. Well. Oh, don't apologize. This was great. Nice to see you both. Goodbye. We'll be back. Uh, we got more episodes this week. Kevin Holden's joining me. Ian O'Connor's joining me. God willing. Internet willing. Time to hit the Kleenex box. To cry, you sicko. <laughs> <laughs>